I've played tons of VR football and basketball games, and I've figured out which ones are good and which ones aren't. But I haven't touched a single VR baseball game up until this point. That's mostly because I'm not super into baseball. But I have to give one VR version a shot to at least see what I'm missing out on. There's a lot to choose from, and most of them are training simulators. The most recognizable one being Win Reality. But it's like $20 a month on a yearly membership, so I'm alright for now. I was hoping to find a more arcade-like baseball experience in VR, similar to what 2MD does for football, and the best looking option for that seems to be totally baseball. Now, at a glance, it's not a very appealing game, since the visual style is so plain and simple, but that shouldn't be a deal breaker at all. It doesn't try to look realistic and lacks character, but it does that in order to run as smooth as possible, and for a sports game tracking actual movements, that's what I care more about. I get that the footage doesn't look spectacular, but remember, it wasn't designed to be experienced on a screen. It transports you there when you put the headset on, and when you're in that world, it looks passable. The main reason you play a VR sport is for the gameplay anyways, and there's quite a bit to it that gives a lot more room for error. But surprisingly, it's really solid. Not only do you play as the batter and get to nail homers, Jerry. <laughs> but you also get to pitch the ball, and even play outfield. You cycle through these positions throughout the game, and while it seems like it could be a bit much, it's actually fairly seamless. That's coming from a guy who's seasoned to VR gaming, but still, all the transitions were fairly comfortable, and it gives you time to adjust. For a virtual baseball game, batting is the most important aspect in my opinion, and here it feels pretty good, but it's nothing like swinging an actual bat. When you're up to bat, your dominant hand becomes the bat, and from there you just swing your arm and try to make contact. Simple. But you still have the controller in your other hand, so you can't hold the dominant controller with both like you would a bat. You could put your other hand up there, but they're still two separate pieces and the opposite hand just gets in the way. To solve that, you could put the other controller down and hold it with both hands, which makes it way more comfortable, but if you hit a good ball, you have to hold forward on both sticks to run, so you have to quickly grab the other one to sprint to the base. I didn't know that at first, because, well, the game just doesn't tell you how to run. At first, I was just holding forward on one stick and wondering why everyone else was moving so much faster than me. Then I pressed both down by mistake and was just like, oh. Also worth mentioning is the fact that the Quest hardware itself struggles to detect movement behind your head. So when you set your arms as you normally would to prepare to swing, the controllers are in that gray area and it causes some of your swings to go all jank. Needless to say, you have to adapt your swing a little bit to make the most of what's there. So no, it doesn't feel like a real baseball swing at all. But the act of hitting balls is still fun. It's just not a simulator, which I'm okay with, but if that's something you're looking for, you gotta look elsewhere. Pitching, on the other hand, feels way more accurate. The grip and the trigger both work to hold the ball, and you just use whatever's most comfortable. Then you throw as you normally would and release the button when you let go of the ball. It took me a long time to get used to, but once I did, it felt pretty darn reliable. Throwing to teammates at different bases is an entirely different story though. It seems like it has a hard time detecting the amount of power you give the ball, and as a result, sometimes the ball just sails over their heads and costs you a few runs. Again, you can get better at preventing that, but it still happens here and there. If you just cannot get the throwing mechanics down though, there's an option to launch the ball from a blaster thing on your arm, which lets you be way more precise, and for newbies, is a great option to have. I don't know though, that's like the biggest part of the gameplay, and that option pretty much automates it, so while it's easier, it's way less interactive. When your opponent hits the ball, no matter how you pitched it, you teleport to the perspective of the nearest player to where the ball is going to land, and get the chance to get under it to make a play. When the ball's secured, you can throw it to the proper base and hope for an out. Sometimes it teleports you to that player and makes you finish the play yourself, but in other cases, the AI is left to do it on their own, and you just have to pray they'll be competent. Most of the time they are, but I said most. Some plays, they just totally screw you over. They'll charge the runner, get evaded, then just stop trying and give the other team points, which is very annoying. AI aside, the catching works really well. Just press the grip or the trigger when the ball's near your hand, and it almost never fails. If anything, it might be a little too easy. It is very forgiving, and I don't think I've dropped a single ball when I've been within reach of it yet. Tracking the ball can be tough though, because forward on the stick moves you the direction you're facing, and while it works in just about every other part of the game, it doesn't when you're constantly turning your head to follow the ball's movement. Every time you turn, that direction moves you a different way, and it can be awfully clunky to get where you need to be. 
2MD faced a similar issue when implementing playable wide receivers, since he had to track down and catch the ball there too, but it locked forward and backward to the end zones, and gave each direction on the stick a set way of movement. It wouldn't be that easy for this game though, since there's not as obvious of a forward and backward. I guess it could potentially lock forward to the home plate and have other movements centered around that, but that's just an idea. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video so far and have found value in it, give the like button a quick tap, and consider joining the channel to get early access to videos like this. Thank you. At the end of every inning, or when teams switch sides, it cuts you to the announcer's booth for a moment while he throws in a satirical sponsor. From up there, you can get a good look at the scoreboard. But like, you were probably looking at it throughout the game, so what's the point? And in case you couldn't get enough of that, you might want to sit down, because there's a whole announcer mode where you can watch an entire game from the booth. Why? Maybe I'm missing something here, but I don't see the appeal at all. You don't even hear your voice from the intercom or anything. That could at least make it fun to mess around with, but no, there's literally no point. That's beside the point though. The gameplay as a whole is great. You get to do a little bit of everything, and it keeps each round from getting boring. There's quite a few options for each game too, which only further solidifies that. You can customize your character, and unlock tons of new fields and opponents, which provide way more context to the foundational content. I can't tell you how pissed I was at this name though. The Los Angeles fans? I don't get it. Oh wow, wow, very clever. <laughs> really though, there's a lot here to help keep the game fresh, and the highlight of it all is undoubtedly multiplayer. It's a staple of VR basketball, and VR football is way behind, so seeing it in this game is huge, but how well it functions only makes that more impressive. You can create your own room for a private game with a friend, or you can find random games in your region, and they run like, really well. I was surprised, there wasn't any bad lag whatsoever, and I had way more fun playing against actual people than I did the bots. There's built-in voice chat too, which keeps the match moving and lets you hear the kid you're playing against rage when you make a good play. Or, if you're playing with a friend, you don't gotta worry about setting up Discord for the game. It's all integrated. Now, you're probably thinking, bro, just go outside and play ball with your friend, what do you mean? Well, where I'm from, outside looks like this for a solid third of the year. So alternative ways to play sports like this indoors are kinda necessity to keep you sane. That's why I'm drawn to games like this. I play 2MD and Blacktop Hoops all the time. Not because they're realistic, but because they provide a familiar experience that trims the fat and goes over the top of what makes the sport so great. And while I haven't tried any other VR baseball games yet, I have to say, this one does the job, and I've enjoyed my time with it a decent bit. Is it perfect? God no, almost every area has its flaws. But they don't ruin the game. I had a good time with it, and you probably will too. It's $15. Other VR sports games float around that same price. And with the solid foundation on top of online multiplayer, it's an investment worth making if you like baseball. But I want to know what you think. Have you played Totally Baseball? And if you have, how'd you like it? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you later. Oh, good stuff! <laughs> You better be home. 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 Ah! Ah! Ah!